Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley Lanise, and on this channel, I share motivational things and blend them with spirituality so you can get the best benefit out of it. This week's video is on self-efficacy. We are going to define what self-efficacy is, and then I am going to tell you how to build self-efficacy with my six tips. Let's get started. Self-efficacy is just a fancy word for saying the belief in oneself. It is your ability to succeed at any given task at any moment. How much do you believe that you can get things done in the time frame that they are allotted? This term relies on how you think, feel, and behave. It was coined by Albert Van Rua and it is a term that means how likely are you to execute an action and believe that you will actually be able to execute that action? The way that you can tell if you have high self-efficacy is do you see failure as an opportunity to keep going or do you see failure as a setback? Creative people are usually high on self-efficacy because Doing things like art usually requires doing things over and over again and believing that you can make it happen. Self-efficacy develops in childhood, but the good thing about self-efficacy is it's a psychological skill that you can build. So with that being said, let's get into how you can build self-efficacy. Tip number one is see failure and constructive criticism with a positive outlook, okay? You have to be able to take feedback well. Failure, like I said in my last video, which I will link down below, failure is just a stepping stone to success. Failure is not a bad thing. We welcome failure. We learn to love failure. So don't see failure as something bad if you wanna have high self-efficacy. If you're going to believe that you can achieve something, you have to be able to take constructive criticism because constructive criticism is just help. It's just people trying to be like, here, here's where you can improve. And so doing it and getting a lot of constructive criticism and having workshops, like I'm a writer, I write books, I'm writing a mermaid series, and through the writing process, I learned that you have to be able to listen to people. And if you hear the same three things with your constructive feedback, this is a rule of thumb that my professor told me. If you hear the same three things from three different people, then odds are everyone else is thinking it. So you should take that into consideration. Now, I understand if one person says it, eh. And see, that's where we get into self-reliance, which will be the video that I make next week. So please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss that. But when you hear a lot of voices telling you, you should probably do this differently. They're thinking with your best interest at heart. Even if it feels like it's like, ooh, tough love, it's always, always, always so good to have the skill of being able to take constructive criticism from others. Tip number two is get better at what you're good at and what you like. This is where self-awareness comes into play. And Gary Vaynerchuk, who I've mentioned before, always, always talks about self-awareness and how we have to know what we're good at. Like for instance, me, I'm good at writing, I'm good at art. I wouldn't go trying to do math, which I'm terrible at, if I'm already good at art and writing. When you stick to what you're good at, you then can increase the belief in yourself because you're naturally good at it. So the belief that you have in yourself, your self-efficacy will grow. Tip number three is mastering your experiences. This means complete things to mastery. If you said you were going to paint a portrait of a mermaid and it was gonna be done the best way possible, then you need to complete that task to mastery. If you said you were going to make a song, complete it to mastery. And so that requires practicing every single day, being persistent, due diligent, determined, and going all in full force every day, little by little, and then you will master the things that you love most. As you go ahead and you complete things to mastery, the key point is to celebrate your way all the way up there. Every single step along the way, celebrate. Even if it's something little, taking a sip of your drink, going outside, getting fresh air, and coming back to what you're working on. Celebrating is key. People often will celebrate when they fail more. They will groan, they'll moan, 
they'll be like, ah, that's so bad because what the universe hears bringing in that spirituality is, oh, they're cheering this on in this way. So we should make them fail more. If you're letting out a vibration that increases that vibration. You don't want to do that. So when you actually succeed, cheer for yourself. Be like, yes, I did it. Like get giddy, get happy, share your excitement with others, set a roadmap to complete self mastery. And as you do that, you will be able to cheer every single stop of the way. Tip number four is observe your emotions before undertaking a task. Now there are people who are bad test takers and they have this emotion around test taking that lowers their self efficacy. Remember I said self efficacy is thinking, feeling and behaving. They are all intertwined. So if you're like, oh, I'm a bad test taker, what you're really saying is when I take tests, I get a feeling that then lowers my ability to be able to behave in the way that I would like to. Self-efficacy is all about analyzing your emotions, observing your emotional responses. So then you can realize, oh wow, in order to have higher self-efficacy when I take tests, I need to wire in a new thought pattern around test taking. And the way that we do that is emotional intelligence. There is a guy, his name is Dr. Joe Dispenza. I will link his channel down below. And he talks about how your neurons in your brain are firing and wiring new connections all of the time. And if you have a connection to something like bad test taking, you can separate those connections and create a new reality and anchor that in with techniques like Tony Robbins' swoosh pattern, the cue response system, which I've made a video on. Tony Robbins says, we believe who we think that we are. If you say, I am a bad test taker, what you're signaling to the universe is you believe that. So you're gonna act and behave in those ways. So this is where the spirituality really comes into the motivation and realizing you gotta do that inner work to unconnect yourself from those limiting beliefs. Tip number five to increase your self-efficacy is watch others, specifically others who are doing the same thing as you. There's something in psychology called mirror neurons. We have evolved out of the mirror neurons into what scientists say a neuron network. I also encourage you guys to do a lot of research on this, but from my understanding, a mirror neuron is basically like you see someone do something, you can see them doing it, and then you can reflect that task back at the universe. Always having role models who do the same things as you is so healthy for you to increase your self-efficacy because you learn through watching. I absolutely love and adore Gary Vaynerchuk, and I also love and adore Aaron Dottie. They are some of my most influential role models for different reasons. Gary is more of a social media, practical, motivating person, whereas Aaron Dottie is spiritual. Both of them are different role models, and as you watch them, you can reflect back both of those vibrations. That leads me to tip number six, which is build your resilience and let go of the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset in psychology is where you think, I can only achieve this and that's it. It's basically what spiritual people call the limiting belief system. You are an infinite being. Understand that you're probably more scared of what you're actually capable of accomplishing than scared of what you're not. It's really weird. In our brains, we know we are so capable of doing so many different things. Realize that you have the power to achieve everything that you want and let go of those limiting belief systems and have resilience. And the way that you do that is you have persistence. You have that determination. You say, I'm getting this done regardless of anything. You make it a must, like Tony Robbins says. I actually have a video on how to plan out your days hour by hour. That's how I get things done. I tell myself I'm gonna do it and then I do it. Now, sometimes the hours are shifted. I don't wanna sound like, I write everything down and I tell myself I'm gonna get it all done and la-di-da, abracadabra. No, that's not how it works. Honestly, I write little check boxes and stuff and some days I don't get it all done, but what I do is I move it to the next day and then eventually I get it done because it's always in the forefront of my brain 
which is something called priming. When you see things a lot, you're being primed. And so be resilient and be persistent and have goals in mind and always keep them at the front of your mind. Have that belief, you will get this done. And that's it. Charisma on Command, another channel I love. I will link down below. They talk about setting hard and fast rules for yourself where you're like, I'm gonna do this, that's it. Because the more energy we put into the, well, maybe tomorrow, that's energy. No, like you're like, I'm doing this, that's it. Keep it simple. And when you love the failure along the way, then you will transcend. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. You're such a rock star. I post new videos on Mondays. So please feel free to hit the subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any notifications. Look me up on Instagram, on TikTok, and thank you so much for watching this again. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.